Now that we are familiar with the scene builder tool, I'm going to create the layout of the first view file. So I have opened it in the scene builder. And the first thing I'm going to do is the select the anchor pane and then define a size of the basic window. So at the width, we have we have a number of width fields here, but the general field that we're going to use is the preferred width. But if you're planning to provide the functionality to resize the window later on, then you can also set the minimum dimensions or the maximum dimensions. So as the width of our window, I'm going to set it to 600 pixel and then as a height, 400 pixel. And here we go, this is our anchor pane. So I'm going to create a very basic view just to demonstrate the functionalities of the scene builder. So out of our library, I will first select a label. I enter label here in the search field and then I can drag the label onto our pane. And here you will notice these guidelines that will help us to place the note on the canvas. I'll set it here and here you can see that it appears in the hierarchy as well. You can see that it is a child element of the anchor pane. And if we look at our layout section and scroll down a bit, we can see that our node has coordinates that define its position on the pane. So instead of positioning it by drag and drop, we can also define the absolute position. For example, we can set it as 250 on the X axis, which would move it a little bit to the left. Well, but now it's not centered anymore. So let's drag a second element onto our pane. Um, the next thing that we need is a text field maybe. So I choose a text field from the library and also drag it here on the pane. And we also need a button. So I will also drag a button on here. And then I want to introduce you to a very nice feature, which is the preview feature. You can click here on preview. And then you have a very nice preview of the layout of the program without actually running it. So all the scene builder is doing here is presenting the view file like it would be running in a program. So of course we didn't provide any functionality and even if we had, it would not be enabled here. So this is just to actually, of course, preview the layout of our view. And it's very nice to get an idea how it actually looks in the end then. And we can notice one behavior here already by resizing this window, which is not very attractive because when we resize the window, the widgets stay at its place without adapting to the size of the window itself. In my opinion, that's not really what we want. So let's figure out what we can do about it. So I'm going to select the label first. And here at the very top of the layout section, we have a very interesting tool, which is called the anchor pane constraints. And with these constraints, well, let me let me just demonstrate it to you. Um, what I'm going to do is click on the lines here to the left and to the right of this square. The square basically represents the selected widget itself. And these lines represent the relationship it has to its, and the lines represent the relationship that the node has to its borders of the windows. So at the moment, well, on the left here, we have 250 pixel, it says, yeah. And this is basically exactly the same value that we also have here in the X coordinates, yeah. What I'm going to do is to set this to zero and press enter. And on the right hand side, I will do the same. I will set zero. And what's going to happen now? Well, what I say now is that the distance to the borders of the window from this widget should always be zero on the left and on the right. Then I'm going to change to the property section. And here where it says alignment, I will say center because that's the alignment as, as you just saw inside the box itself. So now it's centered and it's exactly centered in the window. If I open the preview now again, we can see it. It's completely centered. And even if I resize it, the label stays in the middle of the window, no matter what size the window is. That looks much better. We actually want to do the same with the text field and the button as well, because I want to position it underneath the label and right in the middle in the window, no matter the window size it is. But because there are two elements, we cannot basically do this for both uh, of them. Because if I were to do it, um, well, I cannot say this should be zero and this should be zero for the text field and for the button as well, because both are in the same line. That would really not fit together because they would both be on top of each other, basically. Yeah. So 
we have one very nice option to still get the behavior that we want. So we're going to select both of them and either here on the right click or right click on the anchor pane. We can say wrap in and we have a lot of options that we can wrap our elements in. But what I'm going to select is the H box and the H box is basically a horizontal box. Let me demonstrate it to you. And if we look now at our hierarchy, we can see that the two elements that we just selected are wrapped or packed inside another element which is called the H box. Now by wrapping up the space that we had before between the elements disappeared because like the label before, the elements are pushed to the left border of the whole box. But here in the spacing attribute of the H box, we can define the space to stay, for example, 20 pixels forever, no matter how big the window is, for example. And with the H box selected, we again go to the constraints and can here like we before did with the label, put the constraints to the left and to the right border zero and center our elements by this. Well, not so far. We first have to uh, select the H box again and go to the property section and also say alignment center. And here we are. Both elements are together centered in this screen. And also in the preview, we can see that this will stay no matter the window size. This is already a very beautiful behavior. Now let's close it and we are going to select the text field first and go to the code section. And here in the ID field that I introduced in the last video, we're going to set an ID for the text field. And because we just have one text field in our view, I'll just simply call it field. And the same I'm going to do for the label, I call it label. The button however doesn't necessarily need an ID for now because we're not going to edit it or work with it except pressing it. More details about that I will explain to you in the controller class video. So but with the label selected I'm going to change in the properties section again and then here where it says font I will change the font size to well let's say 20. And before we finish off one very important setting as I mentioned before in the controller area here we have to connect the view to the controller class. So we're going to write application for the package with the name application because this is where our controller class is located at. And then we say main window controller. It's important that it's exactly spelled like the name of the class that we created before. All right, now we can save our file and go back to Eclipse. Now the first thing we're going to do now back in Eclipse after creating the view file, which is often forgot and is a major source of problems, is to synchronize the view file with Eclipse. So we're going to project and say clean. And with our project selected, we're going to say OK. And it's important that this checkbox start a build immediately is selected. So what this is doing is basically building the program again and considering all the changes that have been made to the view file. And as you just saw, all the elements that we entered here also appeared in the XML file. So remember, after any edit in the scene builder to any view file, you have to synchronize the project. All right, that's our first view. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create the controller class and then we can start and use our program.